YouTube channel. Today, I'm going to talk to you about the INFP, which is one of the 16 Myers-Briggs personality types. Now, I'm real excited to talk to you guys about the INFP because I really like this type. I always feel drawn into their energy. There's something very calming about them. I think a lot of people really like this type because they have this intrigue and this mystique about them. They sort of have this quiet, calm, sometimes shy charisma about them. There's more to them than you might see on the surface. They have a very easygoing kind of energy unless you challenge them. And that's what I kind of want to start off with today. What I've noticed about the INFP is that you know, I really like their type. I think most people like their type because they're easy to be around and you can just feel their caring energy. But there are some people out there who, for some reason, don't understand the INFP. I'm sure most of them can relate to feeling bullied. I think there are a couple of types out there who seem to take the INFP's kindness as a challenge, not even so much as a weakness. There are some people who take their niceness and they want to take them on. They can become very argumentative with the INFP, become very challenging, put them down, make mean comments, come at them with sarcasm. That's never okay. Nobody has the right to be disrespected or mistreated. And the INFP is perplexed by those people. How does the INFP react to that? They either remain quiet, remain peaceful, just kind of ignore and just keep their distance and don't they don't have a reaction to it. There's also the INFP that doesn't get confronted as much because they've sort of developed this sarcasm. So this type of INFP would rarely get confronted. I see everybody kind of, <laughs> you know, like laughing with them because they know how to say things in a really clever, turned around way. Some INFPs have developed a talent for arguing and winning. Does the INFP feel good about having to bring that side out of them? Of course they don't. Fortunately for the INFP, they don't have to do that with most people. INFPs are very focused and intelligent. They're very good at meeting the needs of people and making people feel quietly cared about. And when they're at work, they usually do a phenomenal job. They can sort of mirror I don't know if it's more of a sensor type of feeling or maybe a judger type of feeling when it comes to getting the work done and doing it in an orderly way that makes sense. They can be very private, but also very passionate, maybe even the most so of all the types. In their heads, they have a rich inner world that I think people would be blown away by. They can be very creative and very driven to find the meaning in life. Sometimes the routine of things can become boring because they like to be artistic and explore. They're tinkering with all of these little ideas and maybe they don't finish it. Keep exploring and playing with those different interests because if for nothing else, it's just truly fun. So they can be very focused and have very intense high levels of concentration, which is so nice because they're not going to get as easily distracted as other people. Speaking of the search for meaning, kind of combine that with that mean spirited person that tries to come at the INFP. They may start to try to try on different personalities to deal with those overpowering people. They I would just say to the INFP, be you, because that's who people are attracted to. Don't let mean people make you change who you are because you have a lot of special things about you that people love. They can be perfectionistic when it comes to getting things done. They can be very picky 
about making sure that they're doing things right. There's a side of them that reminds me a little bit more of an ISFP because ISFPs like to have fun, fun, fun. So sometimes an INFP likes to go to clubs and likes to party and likes to turn up. Now that doesn't mean that they're not introverted and that they don't need time to rejuvenate and recuperate. They have introverted feeling and that's what you're going to meet. How do I feel about this? How do I feel about my actions? What can I do better? What can I do differently? How should I handle this situation with care? It's, it's something that's always sort of working behind the scenes to figure out different scenarios and dilemmas. And it really comes in handy for them because they want to care about people. They want to make the right decisions. They want to do good things for the world. It's really how they make their decisions. They're going to make their decisions with a lot of careful consideration. They can sense when someone needs help or someone is stressed out or frustrated. They have extroverted intuition. So that's where their imagination comes from. These are idea people. They may use a lot of metaphors to explain what they're thinking to people. They can sort of by nature resemble like a five on the Enneagram in the way that they're sort of observe people from afar and kind of know how they can step in to be caring and helpful, but they also can sort of mirror the SJ in a more guardian-like way. They do have people that they sort of look out for. Shonda Rhimes is an INFP. She's the creator of Grey's Anatomy, Scandal. That's an example of someone whose inner world is very creative, highly intelligent to be able to have such an impactful and powerful career that takes intelligence, it takes creativity, it takes intense concentration. INFPs, you've, you've got a lot of talent and gifts that you can tap into. So let's talk a little bit about relationships when it comes to the INFPs. INFPs sort of have this advantage because they're naturally considerate, compassionate, and in tune. Who doesn't want to be deeply understood? When it comes to love, INFPs can fall very hard and very deep for love in all its magic and all of its hues. When it comes to like arguing and conflict, they don't like that. You know, they want to live in peace and harmony as much as possible. INFPs can go all in and be deeply intrigued by the person they're with. If you put your all into a relationship and it doesn't work out, that's really hard. But that can be especially difficult for the INFP because they put so much energy and attention into it. They don't really navigate, but they sail through a realm of innocence when it comes to love. And how freeing is that? Logically, they might know when it's time to end a relationship, but because they're not moving through a relationship with logic, and they have that strong NF preference that's combining together, they're going through it with their emotions and their heart. Sometimes when it comes to relationships, an INFP might be a little bit bashful, a little bit shy. So one thing that INFPs you guys can do is maybe try to ease in with more of a friendship approach and develop it that way. But once they're in a relationship, they can feel very comfortable and at ease with the person that they're with and have a lot of fun too. They can have a, a kind of infectious warmth to them. They can be smooth, charming, and alluring. If you're with someone who's an INFP, you'll notice that they have this interest in the humane and that they're very drawn to helping people. And they can't be deterred from that, but they're going to encourage you to get involved in as well. And I think you can't help but get involved when you see how good they are at it. I think Mother Teresa was a perfect example of an INFP. Some people think she's an INFJ, but I think the way that she was so deep into her cause and her vision, there are INFPs that are ambiverts. 
So they will have more of an extroverted type of energy that they're coming with. So that ambivert type INFP is not an ENFP whatsoever. So this type of INFP can appear to be a social butterfly and they're not gonna be afraid to go after what it is that they want. If it's somebody that they're interested in, they can jump out there. I think that Janet Jackson is an INFP. She's very quiet when she talks, but when she gets on stage, it's like she becomes this extrovert, you know, just wow. Okay, so which Myers-Briggs really like INFPs? My answer to that would be all of them. I mean, who doesn't like the INFP? One of the types that I think would not necessarily be a good type, however, there are exceptions to the rules and I think any type can be good with any type, but I would say the INFP and the ESFJ, I think would clash. I think they just would not understand each other. One of the types that I think really likes the INFP is the ENFJ. And we can see that combination with the latest Bachelorette, which is Rachel Lindsay, and her new fiance, Brian, and they really click. They have the same temperament, that NF temperament, so they can relate to each other in many ways. They're gonna be interested in each other's personal growth and fostering that. They both have deeply held values and they both like a strong emotional connection. Both of those types sort of have this deep need to search for meaning in their lives. They can both enjoy intellectual stimulation. I think ENFJs really like the INFP's insight into things and their playfulness. The INFP is not gonna let the ENFJ get away with this. Because ENFJs, they can be a little bit surfacey when it comes to how they really, really feel inside. Sometimes that can be a little scary to put that out there, but they really want to. And the, the INFP knows how to go into that NFness and really bring it out. I also think that the ENTP finds the INFP to be really a great love interest for them. They are gonna both enjoy exploring new things together, new ideas possibilities that they can explore together and they're gonna both like meeting new people and being engaged in that way and because they both have that strong desire to enjoy life and explore it they can really have a very enjoyable relationship with each other especially when they're in that zone they just have to remember to stay in that zone and not be deterred by the aspects of themselves that are different if they can remember to stay on that path of enthusiasm and enjoy enjoying life then they can have a really really deeply satisfying relationship they're both going to be very open-minded not necessarily have to follow the traditions or the set ways of doing things. What they'll foster in each other is that ability to delve into their own creativeness and, and expressing those things regardless of what society says that these are the rules that you must follow. So finally, to sort of sum up the INFP, they have their own codes that they follow in their life that they hold themselves accountable to even though they're that tough on themselves, they're sort of the opposite of that with others. They sort of let others be who they are. And they might not like being pinned to a certain view of themselves. So INFPs love to learn, they love to grow, they love to get better at things in life, they like to be creative. If you're lucky enough to know an INFP, enjoy being in their presence and getting to know them so i want to thank you for watching my video please give me a thumbs up please subscribe so that you can keep up with my mbti videos go out and have a nice day bye